Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the infinite regression, behold and despair, look upon my works ye mighty and despair, yes, yes, we've all read that poem, and understood it completely, anyway, uh, so, yeah, I just thought I'd play one more, one more, uh, Switch game today, and because the last one left me with a bittered taste in my mouth, like, so bitter, in fact, that it is no longer uh, here. <laughs> like, I deleted it from my Switch because it made me angry. I don't like having to, you know, try to play baseball with a toothpick. This is what it was like. So let's play this game. Aww. Oh, bed music. I forgot about bed music. Oh, yeah, that that's a bed of music. Unity. Let's get this mouse out the shot. Shoo. Anyway, I'll play this game called Aw. Maybe. Long loading screen. Boop ba doop ba doop boop. Long loading screen. Long loading screen. Loads up the screen. Like, I'm still... Yeah, I'm still... <laughs> you know, check sometimes to be like, I'm doing it right. Yeah, I'm doing it right. Yes, this is the rhythm organizer. <laughs> you know, Noir et Blanc V, uh, you... Drive me crazy with your whys. We got a whys in everything in place of eyes. Oh, come on, game. Load up. Okay, what if I... I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try closing it. i gonna try to load it again. Let's see if it's gonna be our friend. Yes, Lice is Badland Publishing. Made with... Unidad. Aww. <sighs> Are you gonna load, friend? Are you gonna be my friend, friend? Oh, look, it's a kitty for no reason. Kitty, I thought we told you to go be somewhere else. Like, we made you a comfy spot so you wouldn't have to climb on our computers and whatnots. Oh, kitties. Anyway. Whoo! Well, I'm three minutes in to this video and I don't have a game started yet. That, that has me consigned. Like, if there was an update to it, I think that it would have told me. Um, I, I will give it a little bit more time, and then we're going to say... Fooey. This is one that I was, you know, was told was pretty cash. And, uh, to be honest, this is one that I got back when I still had hopes of my wife ever playing such things. But she don't, like, she is not about console gaming at all. She's all about PC gaming, and I can understand why. PC gaming is much easier and much better in many ways. What the Switch has on PC is that you can take it with you. Oh, I heard a beeping noise. Is that the sound of a game booting, perhaps? I swear to God, aw. Uh, Uh, we're on a new song. It's been so long. Okay, maybe. Maybe this won't even be the game that I play. Okay. Uh, yeah. The first five minutes of my video are not going to be me not playing Awe. Because that is terrible. 
Okay, well, let's play something that we can play. Uh, let's see, Bit Trip Runner. You know what, I own this on my Wii U. I own it on my, uh, my 3DS. I I think I have it on my Vita and stuff. I have it on a lot of systems. And yet, I've never played it. Wait, slide. Okay. All right, first contact. I, I did not remember what the buttons were. Hopefully it teaches me as I go. Ta-da! Okay, jump is A. Oh, wow. La, la, la. I like how I'm picking up basically, uh... Oh, what? Okay, come on. Okay, there's 11 golds. Apparently, I'll just be terrible at every video game today. And just be angry at all of them. Woohoo! Oh, what? Man, I was doing alright. A little bit. Okay, I gotcha. Oh, so they are different every time. Somehow I'm less impressed with the procedural generation of a game like this. Oh, I think just the, uh, the golds are in different places. I think that's what that is. Oh, missed it. Ooh hoo hoo! There we go. I don't completely suck at everything. Challenge completed. Okay. Bonus get. Retro challenge. Okay. I knew that the. Oh. I should have said nothing. This reminded me. This reminds me of Pitfall in a number of ways in terms of its like the way the gold looks and stuff. Enter initials. Oh, this is bringing me some super retro vibes. And you know I love my retro vibes. There we go. Oh, I should have done like filthy words instead of my actual initials. I mean, those aren't my actual initials. Oh, I was wondering if that would be a pit that I could fall down. So now I have to keep an eye out for those, as well as ground crystals. You gotta watch them ground crystals. Oh, butts. Okay. Once upon a time, I was really good at a couple of different auto runners, but that was on my iPad. And that was using like tilt controls and whatnot. Boom, mega. All right. Oh, oh <laughs> I barely missed that. To the point where the game seemed like it was thinking about like, should we let him have it? Nah. Okay, here we go. Ra, ra. That's how we do that. Then boom, ba doom. Boom, boom. Oh, butt cheeks. Oh. Vote to raise taxes on those ground crystals. What I'm gonna do. Haha. -ha. 
then we'll see what they think. And they're paying for my children to go to public schools. <laughs> While I also pay. <laughs> we are in the same tax bracket, these ground crystals and I. Oh, some of the bench. Okay, I'm gonna... Yeah. Get a pipe down, get serious. Yeah, I think because I'm using a capture device, there's a little bit of lag. Um, it was a problem I was running into before when I was doing my emulation console, my RetroPie. Um, anyway, because like those stair steps are wicked hard because there's like a certain amount of lag and I think I've gotten used to it on the other uh, other jumps, but I'm just not not hitting this. I do love the retro vibes of this game though. I've always like been a little skeptical. Oh, sneezed and it didn't kill me. I was so concerned that I was gonna sneeze and die. Oh. Die in the same place again and again. It's like watching me play Akane. Which I am not great at, but I enjoy quite a bit. Boop. Ow, oh, but. Because the, the problem is, like, I keep faulting on the hitting it too early because when I hit it late, I was landing on the back side of the step with no time to jump onto the next step. So I need to, like, find the happy medium there. Ah. <sighs> I don't know wh why my brain is going the way it's going right now because I said the word medium and it made me think of uh, people who pretend to be able to speak to the dead for money but there's no way to verify whether or not they actually can speak to the dead because of like <laughs> a lack of oversight anyway it's a it's a stupid thing and no one can speak to the dead like I'm sorry um, but like you should not pay for women with uh, very, very long fingernails to uh, give you false hopes about your dearly departed loved ones. Like, would I love to be able to speak to my recently deceased brother again? Absolutely. You know, every day I'm finding things that I'm like, oh, he would have loved this. I should, you know, like, I wish I could send this to him. You know, I wish I could show him this or we could enjoy this together. And like, those things are never gonna happen. And that's a sad and tragic part of life. But also it's a sad and tragic part of life that helps you to like place an appropriate value on the other parts of life you know like get your priorities straight i mean look i know that heidegger is problematic but being towards death is one of the great concepts in philosophy and and i really do uh stand by it in its more practical extensions which are see that's my problem i keep landing in a way that I can't hit that next step. Like, where's my happy medium to talk to my dead brother? Anyway, haha, joking about things. Anyway, yeah, let's not. Yeah, just think about this. If you, you know, think about using a medium to contact your dead relatives, like, first of all, 
how would you know, aside from the fact that they are accepting your money to do something that you don't know whether or not they can do? Um, how would you know if they are doing it correctly or not? And I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking is like, oh, if they could tell me things about my brother that like only someone who knew him would know. Yeah, and that's where they get you with the old cold read or even worse, a hot read. Uh, that would be where like a family member or someone is uh, hopefully unknowingly supplying information to the medium prior to the reading so that um, they can uh, get that information and use it against you. Like cold reading is they're just throwing things out and you are remembering the hits but not the misses. It's an old trick used by carny folk for forever. Like duping um, otherwise well-intentioned people out of their hard-earned cash for millennia. <laughs> is a stupid thing and it's a mean and cruel trick to play on someone it's like either you can speak to the dead or you cannot and if you can then um you know i i would put forth the james randy questions which i think james randy passed away recently if i'm not mistaken which is very sad anyway uh, but James Randi said that, like, you know, um, he, he has a, a grandmother who um, should have had a will containing um, information about where and how to access a certain fortune that the family would like to have access to. Uh, but because no one can find the will, um, they, they've been unable to uh, do it. Now, if you contacted a dead person and were like, hey, where's the, the, where's the will? Where is a piece of paper that you definitely know where it was when you were alive? Um, where is it now that you're dead? That information should not have changed. And like... Uh, they should be able to provide it. Well, they can never provide it. Like, you could go to as many mediums as you want. Um, and, like, I know that you're like, oh, but the Long Island medium or whatever. No one can talk to dead people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the world is much more normal. That it's not, uh, that it's natural and not supernatural. That it's normal and not paranormal. I'm sorry that it's so, but like, if you think about it rationally, you will likely come to the same conclusion. Anyway, and like, how could you possibly, other than not engaging them at all, like, let's assume that you believe that, um, that there are such things as psychics and mediums who can actually literally speak to the dead, right? Well, wouldn't a certain number of the people who claim to be these things actually be... Couldn't they actually be faking it? Certainly, because there are always people who are willing to do just about anything to make a buck. Uh, we know this through, you know, so much history of humans doing just about anything to make a buck. I should be commenting on the fact that I keep dying in super obvious ways. And no one is contacting the uh, dead past versions of my digital self. Anyway, regardless. Um, but this is what we call an unfalsifiable claim. What if I said to you right now, I can speak to the dead? And you'd be like, well, wait, didn't you say that mediums aren't real? And I was like, yeah, but that's before I got my powers. Now I have powers. That will be $200, please, for me to tell you what? To tell you, like, oh, I'm channeling your dead loved one, and I'm in a better place, and I'm happy, and, um, you know, like, parts of life were hard, and now 
that I'm not alive anymore, you can have a better life and like w whatever they say, because it's always stuff like that. And and also conspicuously, like James Randi pointed out that like they never bring anyone back from hell, which is like telling. Wait. I'm using a different jump button. Because, like, obviously... Okay. Uh, most religions, as we understand them, and coincidentally, the concept of religion itself is problematic because it smacks of imperialism um, and colonialism and... Um, is the sort of thing that uh, the indigenous peoples whose religions we, you know, disbelieve out of hand because ours is superior and theirs is inferior while we still recognize the fact that, like, if we had been raised in their religion, then we would believe the same thing they do. So thank goodness our parents brought us up in the religion that's the actual really, really, really true one. Unlike theirs, which is obviously false. Why is it false? Well, it's not ours, but it's theirs. And how would it... Oh, no, I'm starting to see plot holes. Anyway. Hey, yep, yep, yep. So, um... Fact is, people... That, um... Oh, come on. I'm so dingus. I was just si trying to see if it would keep jumping if I just held it down, you know, like in Geometry Dash, because I was first playing Geometry Dash. It was like, I can't get up these steps. It was like, oh, you just hold the button? Oh. Now I'm dying much earlier. That's good. I'm getting worse. Actively getting worse at this game. Anyway, but like you have really no means of determining whether someone is genuinely contacting the dead or only in it for the money or the fame or the prestige or whatever it is they do. And so like it's best to just live in the real, the natural, the um, normal, which is unfortunately free of you know those kinds of things it'd be nice to be like oh yeah i could totally I'll, all i have to do is pay a woman from jersey like two hundred dollars and boom and talking to my dead loved ones like yeah i obviously that would be nice like who wouldn't pay that amount of money Deep down, I think everybody knows that it's all a big hoax. Like, but admitting that to yourself would be akin to admitting that, like, there is no hope for you. Oh, it's close on that one. It felt close. Anyway, that there is no hope for you in terms of, um, you know, having the kind of ability to uh, carry on living after your own death that you hope for. I mean, that's what people ultimately want, is they want not only to live after... Oh! I got to the second step. This is the first time. They want to not only live after their own death, which is a tall order, um, but they want to... Um, like thrive and be happy and be able to contact people that they cared about in life like who doesn't want that i don't i certainly don't like um i will tell you this honestly i really and honestly believe that because there is an expiration date on life it makes it more precious like what drives the the value of diamonds the fact that you can't just get them. Now, granted, there are more diamonds. Oh, 
there are more diamonds in the world than you think. Um, and they should be worth less, but the De Beers Corporation um, controls access to them and as such drives the demand for them. But yeah, maybe diamonds were a bad choice. Maybe gold. <laughs> You know, like, what's the price of gold based on? It's based on the availability of gold. Um, and so, like, if gold is so wildly available, ah, if gold is so wildly available that um, anyone can just go out in their backyard with a shovel and get some, then what is the real value of gold? Nothing whatsoever. It's absolutely worthless. And so, um, what is the value of life if it just continues and continues and, like, you can't stop having it? <laughs> well, I would argue that there is no value. I, I would argue that, like, the concept of infinite, immortal, or even eternal type lives, which I know are the basis of many religions, and I'm sorry that I'm going to sound absolutely blasphemous here. Oh, remember that show, the BBC show, Absolutely Blasphemous? Pet Shop Boys did the theme song. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so fact is, um, ra. There we go. <sighs> Wanting something to be true does not make it true. Like, it's being true makes it true. And things are true whether or not people believe that they are true. You know, everyone in the world could believe that the sky is, in fact, purple, and it would not change the color of the sky. Anyway, so, um, yeah, it doesn't matter to me that much whether or not you believe anything that I've been saying about mediums and whatnot. It's just, I don't want you to come at me and be like, you, but you have to believe it. Because that just smacks of your need. Oh, I almost, that just smacks of your need to have a constant reaffirmation of things that you want to believe for wildly selfish reasons. And think about it. Like, what are you going to do in year three billion and one of your own existence? What are you going to do that's going to bring you any amount of joy whatsoever? Because year three billion and one, you will have done everything. You will have experienced everything all that there is to experience there will be no surprises left for you whatsoever um and so like the sweet release of not having to go through that like please understand <laughs> the concept of nirvana we in our weird warp uh self interested uh western view of it we come to think of it as oh it's being one with everything and it's being you know so blissfully happy all the time and it's like no 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 that is not nirvana like you have to understand what a young Siddhartha Godama was trying to accomplish he saw the truth of the world and the truth of the world is that you are born an infinite number of times uh, and you're born only to suffer uh, grow old get sick and die like that was the that that was the big realization for him that sent him out into the wilderness uh, to seek his enlightenment and there beneath the Bodhi tree he realized that there is a path to Nipian to Nirvana, which uh, gives you like not a sense of one with everything, but a sense of none with everything. You cease to be reborn. Oh, 
If only I had actually continued the way that I had begun there. Ugh. Okay. Woo! I made it to a flag! <laughs> I, I missed a bunch of the gold, but I actually... I actually did it. I feel very accomplished. Woohoo! <laughs> that one's much harder than the first one. <laughs> Oh wait, slide. This is chilling on my backside. I love the giant worms animation like that's solid. Anyway. Boom. Shalak lock boom. Anyway. I can't imagine doing anything in the three billion and first year of my own existence that would bring me any degree of happiness whatsoever. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I don't possess the ability of imagination to understand what an immortal being would do to keep from wanting to kill themselves. Like, uh, in... Peter Pan, what does Peter eventually realize? That the only great adventure left is death. That's in the book, not the Disney movie, obviously. That'd be a very different movie. Uh, it'd be less racist, probably. Yeah, I got you. Uh, slide. Okay, after this level, we are calling it quits because this has gone on long enough. But yeah, like, obviously I understand that death is sad and it makes people sad, like, and I even know why, because of, guess who's been through that recently? Oh, this guy with the two thumbs on the controller. Anyway, yeah, like, I get it. I'm not unaware of these facts, but like, for real though, I... How selfish can you be that you think your own existence is worth prolonging to that ridiculous of, a, of an extent? Like, think about your impact on the planet. <laughs> like, think about your impact to humanity. Like, what could you possibly be contributing in year three billion and one? Like, I just can't even. I can't even. You've asked me to even, and I can't. I cannot. Yeah, I got you, dude. Anyway, here we go. Sorry, I don't know why I'm getting all philosophizing on you. Oh, but in case you don't know, Heidegger is being towards death. I've explained it on this channel before. The concept that by understanding that you are, by living in such a way that you are acknowledging your own death. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I'm like the guy on the cover. Anyway, by living in such a way that you are acknowledging your own death. Yes. Then you are, in fact, uh, living authentically. Bonus get. Oh, uh, man. Okay, yeah, I've got to do the bonus challenge. Collect these golds. Oh, pff. nicely done. Challenge complete. I got 14. There you go. That's my final score. I got the high score. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, well, oh, don't make me go again. 
take me back to the main menu. <laughs> Alright. Uh, thank you, BitTrip Runner, for restoring my faith in, in gaming. Like, you saw me get better at that as time went on, so that's good. That's a good thing. Alright, people. I'm gonna pause this, and we're gonna put a score on this, but I gotta punch a kitty butt. Move your stinky butt. I don't actually, just in case you're wondering, I don't actually punch their butts as much as I push their butts to get them, because they like going behind our monitors, because it makes a little cave. They're like, ooh, I can hang out in this little cave area. Like, yeah, get behind there, but please, for the love of God, don't sit in front of the monitor, because that's terrible. Anyway, hold up and I'll put a score on this. All right then, hey, I'm back. Totally back. Yep, anyway, so I really enjoyed Bit Trip Runner, and I enjoyed talking about things as a do run my mouth all the time. That's why, in the coming Civil War, I will be gutted with a bayonet, probably by one of my former students. I've told them that they should. Anyway, regardless, uh, here's the final score for Bit Trip Runner. A five out of six Heideggers, but, uh, you know, it's problematic <laughs> when you start really enjoying a philosopher with a German last name, and you're like, oh, Heidegger, what, what you got? And he's like, oh, this concept called being towards death, and it's very useful in an existential way. You're like, oh, that's cool. I'm very heavily into existentialism. Oh, well, I'm like one of the main dudes into existentialism. It's like, you know, me, this Dutch guy that who gives a crap about. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because Heidegger did not like Kierkegaard. Just kidding. I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea about what Heidegger thought of Kierkegaard. Anyway, the fact is that uh, Heidegger, um, brilliant philosopher, many very influential and important ideas came from this man who was a very, very unfortunate anti-Semite. Like, come on, dude. Really? Really? And also was linked with the Nazi party. Like, what? Really? Heidegger. Are you serious right now? I swear to God. Anyway, like, yeah. That's what you get with philosophers with German last names. But Bit Trip Runner, that's a fun game. Reminds me very much of Atari type fun, and it's meant to. A lot of fun games on the old Atari, and I have a ton of them. And also, like, uh, it doesn't matter if the graphics are amazing. It matters whether or not the gameplay is good and the gameplay in Bit Trip Runner is good. I do want to play it when it's like not um, playing through the thing and, and like I want to play it. I would take my Switch off the dock and out of the uh, capture card to see if I'm any better at it when I'm playing without lag. Because I swear there's like just a little bit of lag in my controls, which may, th which also might be the reason why I really didn't like Atomic Heist. Because if you have lag and everything's closing in on you all the time, and you're like, ugh, I have to aim very precisely. And by the time you've aimed at an enemy, they've already moved again. Yeah, that, that would be problematic, obviously. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll let you know in the comments uh, whether or not I'm better at it with uh, taking it off the dock and just playing it. Um, anyway, so we'll, we'll see. All right, people. Uh, this has been a fun one, and we will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.